when it comes to investing and having the ability to actually build wealth. The earlier that you start, the better. And in today's video, that's exactly what we're gonna looking at. When you're starting looking at Gen Z and when you're looking at different generations within time, you can see that there has really been a switch and I feel like it's a lot more education and a lot more of the financial counseling, which I absolutely do love and I do it professionally, meaning that we are getting through. So when you look at Gen Z, they are starting to invest earlier than anybody. When we look at the Gen Z adults, they begin investing on average around the age of 19 which is kind of crazy according to the 2024 Schwab Modern Wealth Survey, which of course is significantly earlier. Baby boomers, we unfortunately were around the age of 35 when we started investing. Even looking at the millennial generation, they were around 25. So we are seeing six years being shaved off. Now, of course, this is one of the absolute biggest most magical qualities that we really do have investing is the power of time and the power with compounding interest, often called, called the eighth wonder of the world. Even if you start earlier, even if you start small, it is a game changer. Saving a dollar today is gonna give the ability to go ahead and grow, and especially if they start invo involving and really getting involved in investing at 19 when you start doing this. A lot of people are also saying that it is because it is incredibly easy to start investing now. When you look at M1 Finance, which I have a link down below, but you look at Webull, you look at Robinhood, you look at 401k plans, there is so much content and so many things out there that give them the ability to invest, which we did not have years ago, which of course, even looking at the income, the CPI, the consumer price index, looking at inflation, the cost of goods, they are still average investors at 19 years of age. When you start looking at this and looking at the Gen Zers, it's people between born between 1997 in 2012. So it's a pretty short kind of stint of when they were born. But again, they are starting to save earlier and they are the earliest generation that we are seeing that is saving. What is the financial benefit and what do they really get from this? The time element is the biggest thing. That is the crucial element. When you start looking at a teen opening retirement accounts, we are talking about investable retirement accounts, talking about 401ks, looking at IRAs, which is interesting because I just sat down with an individual 20 years of age looking to open a Roth IRA and I said, where did you hear about it? And he said, social media. That's right, again, it's kind of crazy. So let's say you set aside $5,000 a year, which again, when you start working, $5,000 a year can be a significant amount. Even looking at a 7% return, if you're starting at 25, you will have a million dollars. If you start at 19, you're looking about $1.1 million, which is crazy. When you think about that $5,000 a year, and again, when you start off early 19 years old, $5,000 is a really big difference, really important, um, and that, that is a big number. Now, when you fast forward 20 years, if you're still saving that $5,000, you're still going to be a millionaire when you get to retirement. And of course, when you look again, 10, 20 years down the road, chances are you've risen in your career, you have finished school, you have significantly improved your financial horizon based on, of course, not holding debt. That is the number one thing. When we start looking at individuals that are of the age and even looking age starting when they started investing at 19, these are a lot of individuals that are carrying the bulk of student loan. That is one of the huge things is when you start looking at student loans and when you look at the ability to really have money to invest, they are coming up with the money. Experts suggest an easy way for young people to build wealth is to open that IRA and starting a Roth IRA. And again, if you're putting money into that Roth IRA at the age of 19, that is a massive window, guys, especially if you want to retire at 62, 65. But also if you do want to entertain the ability to retire early, putting money in that Roth IRA, allowing it to grow tax-free is going to be an absolute game changer. Now, when it comes to this, I have to say it with a heat of caution because trusting advisors and not TikTok, not YouTube, I know there are a lot of financial influencers or fin influencers as they call them in this, this article. Much of Gen Z's confidence about investing comes from the growing accessibility of financial resources, which we kind of talked about. More than a quarter of Gen Z say they learned about it investing compared to 19% with millennials and Gen Z was 12% when it came to school. So it's kind of crazy that as we kind of get uh, financial literacy more equivalent in school, it doesn't seem like they're teaching investing at all. I mean, even when you look at Gen Z, we're at 28%. That is hearing and understanding investing 
when it comes to high school, which again is kind of crazy. Now, of course, it is also freely available information between online, between social media. It is really a game changer when it comes to older generations because we didn't have access to it. Now, again, thinking about when I started my investment journey, it was actually with Invesco, which is funny because they're still around today. But back in my day, you would go ahead and you would get a prospectus in a book form. That is right, it was paper. You would mail them back a paper check if you don't know what a check is, check out with your local financial institutions. But yes, I would mail them back a paper check and then they would send me a receipt through the mail. So everything was actually through the United States Postal Service at the time, which is kind of crazy. Now, of course, like I said, you have to take this with a grain of salt because if you're getting your financial information online, if you're getting it from social media, do your research. I always stick to what Warren Buffett says. Never invest in anything that you don't understand and that you cannot explain to another person because, of course, you have to make sure that you know exactly what your money is going into, what the risk is going to be associated with it, which is the reason why, personally, I do only invest in ETFs, which is big. Now, of course, if you're not wanting to put in the time, if you're not wanting to put in the research, there are professional financial advisors. When you look at pretty much any financial institution, your banks, your credit unions, but even when you look online, if you look at Fidelity, if you look at Schwab, if you look at JP Morgan, there's an incredible amount of places that can offer you. And of course, you do have to pay them, but they can be your trusted financial advisor. They are certified. They are, a lot of them um, carry a lot of different licenses and things to really put you in the best financial position if you want to pay the bill. Now, of course, usually comes with about a 1% cost, so definitely keep that in mind. So the question comes, should people be investing when they have student loans? The biggest thing is when you look at student loans, when you start looking at the um, second quarter of 2024, 6.8 million borrowers hold under 24, hold $99 billion in student loans. That's right, 6.8 million borrowers under the age of 24 have a hundred billion dollars in student loans. Now tell me there's not something wrong with that. When you think big picture, that is kind of crazy. And the number is even higher when you get out of the under 24 up to $490 billion for the 14.8 million borrowers, which are age 25 to 34. So when you start breaking this up and looking at the numbers itself, you are talking almost 21, almost 22 billion student loan holders within the United States, or excuse me, 22 million holders within the United States that are carrying that student loan debt. So experts say nothing should hold you back from investing. Now, again, when you think of Dave Ramsey, when you think of a lot of the, the financial um, really gurus out there, they say pay off the debt first and make sure that you pay off the debt. And of course, a lot of people say that if you're waiting to pay off the debt, you're never ever going to start investing. It's always gonna to be too expensive. You're never gonna make the commitment. Try balancing your debt repayment with at least investing something. This is where the methodology or the thought process really comes to paying yourself first. If you're putting a little bit away, now I know the debt might be a little bit more expensive. And honestly, if you're looking to do the company match, I personally recommend doing the company match first. So if your company is giving you 5%, you're matching your 5%, rest of that outside of what you're matching in there should be going into essentially the debt repayment. Because of course, if you're investing and let's say you're getting a 7% return, yet you're carrying credit card debt where you're owing 30%, kind of makes sense mathematically, even, I mean, psychologically, to pay off that debt, get rid of it, giving you the ability to keep a lot more of your paycheck. And with that, being able to put a lot more away into investment accounts and you'll start seeing it snowball. Now the snowball also works the other way. What I mean by that is if you start not paying the debt, if you're only doing the minimums, your debt will start accumulating, especially if you start using it. It gets very, very expensive very fast. So making sure again that you're handling, managing and paying off that debt while you're still setting a little bit aside um, to go ahead and save. Now guys, that's gonna do it for today's video. Let me know in the comments what you guys think. And as always, thank you guys for watching.